Hey guys, uh, we're here for another Big Crunch 2 uh, recap game. This is match number 3, my Amazons uh, versus Boschka's Nurgle team. So he induced a Lona Rodder and an Apo. Oh, wait. I thought he induced an Apo. One KO off the bat's good for me. Wait, what did he? Oh, babe, that's right, my bad. So, this game's gonna go very similar to uh, the other ones where I just try to mark up and make him roll double skulls everywhere because he doesn't have block and my dudes are hard to tackle. His only level up is Claw on a Rotter. My level ups are Mighty Blow on a Blitzer and Strength Up on a Catcher. So he puts position, dude's covering the ball uh, first, very sensible, so he seems like a pretty half decent player just from that opening. Pretty scared about the Beast of Nurgle with his tentacles holding my dudes in place, so I'll probably will end up uh, just marking that player with a person every time. So double skulls occurs. He picks them both down and knocks out a player, so we're both down one player, even pitch. He doesn't get a chance to pick up the ball though, which is pretty big. I'm trying to decide between blitzing off the left flank so that he has to go right and pressuring the ball, or whether I'm going to uh, blitz on the right flank to try to uh, group him up a bit more. Pretty tough decision. do decide to take off the left flank and do a pretty pretty nice screen on the others. So I'm going to stay with my Mighty Blow person just so that I can't get, um, uh, can't get blitzed off and may as well run one person back. This makes the very difficult to get two die on the thrower. Beast of Nurgle works, we get the left flank sealed up with our two strongest players and a lot of spare players on the right flank so we're feeling pretty good about this initially. If he fails this pick up we've got a lot of opportunity to come in. He doesn't follow with his Nurgle Warrior, I feel like he should be following whenever he can with the uh, two Nurgle Warriors he has. Oh, I should talk about that, yeah so he's, uh, he's starting Rostar was only a Nurgle warrior or two and he got all the Pestigors instead. So he's a bit quicker than most Nurgle teams but he's definitely not nearly as bashy. And he's very reliant on Rodders. Um, so there's a lot of weakness in his armor there. I feel like it's better to start with the four Nurgle warriors and getting a beast of Nurgle as soon as you can because that's like one of their strengths is just all the foul appearance and tentacles that can really just screw up the opposition's players. So I know I think very carefully here about blitzing off this right flank and getting a person or two onto the ball carrier there at the risk of a possible serve. Um, I'm going to put one guy around the flank just to like make the um, transition to the left side of the field very difficult for him and we're going to go for this blitz. We're going to follow that because instead of getting onto the ball with a dodge we're just going to mark up and make another, another block. Both skulls, but we got blocks, so it's alright. Covering in case this dodge fails. Oh, actually, I don't even try the dodge. Beast of Nurgle's on my Mighty Blow character, which sucks. But if anything goes wrong here, I'm in a perfect spot to just jump all over this ball carrier. Blitz is coming on the right. I don't think that's a very good blitz. I've got four people there. None are really in position to get um, surfed. Doesn't really gain him any field position because of the positions. I think blitzing off this uh, blitzer on the left and making some kind of a cage in here 
was probably better. Um, yeah, there's definitely opportunities here, and this actually gives me a a two die on the ball carrier. So I do have to mark up a bit for this to occur. We're going to put that one connecting to the beast, just because there's no guard, and um, I really want. Um, I really want to dodge away with this Mighty Blow character, so at least the beast is still marked with somebody. We get the sack, hoping for a good scatter so we can pick up and run off. It is a good scatter. A two uh, block here would be real nice. We get that as well. And then we're going to start rotating players over early. And then we go for the pickup. Sweet. Six into a five will do it. A GFI would have been good here because I believe uh, the rotter can get there with GFIs. So one, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI. And I believe he even does two GFI with the other carrot the other rotter uh, for a marker. So one GFI would have saved me from getting sacked. I should have counted that, I didn't count that at the time. That was that was a mistake by me. Just a little bit of attention to detail. Tentacles doesn't work, which is good, because I free up the big heavy hitter. Once the two die pushes that uh, rotter a little bit closer, gets a KO. So that's down two players for myself, down one on the pitch for him. But I do have the ball, this is a great start to the game. If I can stall that to the last turn, that'd be great, because he doesn't have... He can't really score very easily in one or two turns. Um, so, I'm not worried about... Stalling would be nice, but it's not my highest priority. Makes the first GFI. Makes the second GFI. Now he needs two GFIs to get the two die blitz. And he needs a power. And he gets it. So like I said, one GFI over to the wing would have saved all that, and this um, armor break there actually hurts quite a lot. Tries for a dodge to get an extra player over there. Has to use another reroll. That that's all his rerolls done for the for the uh, uh, drive. I don't think that reroll was worth it. Just because he his lack of block means that he's probably going to have to reroll at least at least the double skulls one more time this drive and bringing that player over and just marking someone up that's easy to get two died doesn't really make that much of a difference I decide not to uh, blitz off anyone on the ball carrier because I can just overwhelm um, all these characters in the middle of the field because the Nurgle Warriors only have two agility so they're not really going to pick it up and I can get, uh, by making this play, rather than doing dodges to try to get to the uh, ball, I've set myself up for, like, I've got a million options next turn on the ball, especially because the stun player comes back. And no rerolls, like a failed pickup would be huge. The thing I'm most concerned about here is a pickup into a pass handoff to the Pestigore and running down the sideline. That's actually a bit scary because he has down players here that can do some tricky things and a spare rotter that can screen off high. So that's the biggest play that I'm seeing that I'm worried about, that I didn't really consider, especially now that my guys are stuck with tentacles. Um, it's, but I see the block, uh, sorry, the blitz with the guy, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. And that's a situation where um, having that re-roll, if you didn't blitz out, uh, that's definitely the opportunity where you blitz that guy, because you didn't even get a chance to go onto the ball. Mighty Blow trying, but not doing doing enough. And we're going to Blitz. You got it. And I believe it's two GFIs to pick up the ball. I failed to pick up. Fail it again. Um, there wasn't anything else to really do. There's this two die without block. Um, I think that blitz was more important and because that pickup was connected with the blitz maybe I should have just marked the ball 
um, instead of trying to pick up, but I still had the re-roll going into that, so I, know, I think that was fine. He makes a couple of nice blocks here and positions my guys, uh, so it's actually very tricky for me to get a two die. I could um, do a three plus with a re-roll into a touchdown now. But I don't really want a touchdown on my line woman if I can help it. I want to try to get it to um, the blitzer. Rolls a skull. Sweet. That's the whole game plan with Amazons. Just try to frustrate your enemy into rolling skulls. So I'm just going to make a few blocks here. This is actually pretty scrappy. I probably should have blitzed with the down character into a handoff. And then I could have got the ball into um, a blitzer's hand. Doing it this way kind of still leaves me open to a two-die blitz on the ball carrier. So I think that was a misplay the way I handled those three. I know I was thinking about it a fair bit. And I think I just picked the wrong option there. Rotate one over for a two-die. Any other character I wouldn't have worried about it. But this is more Mighty Blow character. So I'm just trying to knock dudes off the pitch. She hasn't been doing a great job of it just yet though, so. Tentacles works. Tentacles works again. And I don't even try with the blodge. I'll just make it hard for her. He probably won't get the block on the blodge. We've actually got a nice um, tackle zone set up against him here with the strength four and the blitzer. It's actually pretty difficult for him to get any more than these three characters onto the ball. Two die on the ball carrier, and that was expected. Doesn't make it. I'm starting to get a bit nervous here because I'm not seeing anything good. He gets double skulls again. Luckily, my thrower doesn't go down there. So I do have a one die on the Pestigore. Um, but if it's a push, it only makes things harder. Actually, I do have a, a one die from the other direction. But like I said, I'm trying to feed the... Uh, I have to re-roll that because I don't have a block on the strength 4. I'm trying to feed the uh, touchdown to my blitzers. But I decide it's just... There's nothing really else happening and it's starting to get a bit tricky. Because this pestigore was freed up to come over and help and that things would have been very difficult on the last turn. And I've stalled out enough where he can't get a one-turn touchdown, so I'm pretty happy with that. His KO come back, mine doesn't, but that's fine because we still have another roll at it at half time. So I decide to uh, back my guys up. Just four squares so that his Nurgle Warriors can't get involved. I could go all the way back, but if it's a blitz, I still want to make use of it. It's probably put my guys at risk when I think about it, but just far enough back that he can't get too many dudes up there for the assist if he wants to group foul or something. He still has a spare player on the bench, so the second half is going to be a full team versus full team, unless injuries occur here. I was actually surprised uh, during the inducement phase of this game. He had 140k uh, inducements against me and he had 80k in his reserve. I was I was almost considering dropping a line woman as I had 13 players. I was considering dropping down to 12 just to take away the wizard. Um, but he doesn't he didn't end up getting that which made me all the more happier. arm break there. That's good. I'm just trying to survive for the second half. Mighty Blow does its thing against the bottom. Choose not to apo that because I'm pretty much deciding that one of these line women are going to get up. And as long as I'm not down players, I don't mind. Yeah. That's the three die. Man, 
and just the stun, so that's fine. So as long as one of these KOs get up, we're pretty happy. And then we can just save our Apo for any of the um, any of the positionals, or if uh, if my guys start to get knocked off the pitch, maybe a KO later in the half. So we'll do a mighty blow punch onto the corner. Try to knock one person out for the next next uh, half. Doesn't get it. Cool. Half time. One oh. Pre feeling pretty happy as that was his drive. Um, in saying that though, I can't really do much with the line of scrimmage blocks. Which is where most of your advantage comes from when you're on offense is you get to bust up the the line and kind of position them how you want. Against Nurgle Warriors and Beast of Nurgle, it's not that great of an idea. Even if I can surround them with dudes, um, just because of foul appearance and stuff, it's just not worth the the resources it would cost. So I'm just going to shy away from the line, uh, make sure there's um, one person blocking them coming straight down the pitch, which is this one here. Uh, we're going to position this one back there because I'm feeling pretty confident that I can get in a Venity Pass and level that Blitzer up. Uh, just because we scored in that first half, I think. Being that they're all rodders and they're pretty slow, I don't think they'll really make too much of a play to get onto the ball. Well, I'm not too worried about it, I should say. Loser turn's good for me because I'm in the lead. Like I said, even if this stalls out and it's just a 1-0 victory, that's fine. So we're going to blitz with the Mighty Blow again, try to do something. May as well target his claw. She finally does something. Mighty Blow gets the job done there. And then we're just going to set up a full cage and just see what he does. The only three that I'm worried about bashing is obviously the two... Uh, the three on the line of scrimmage there. Anyone else, I can pretty much manoeuvre my chicks around to get two dies on the wall. Position that one there, just so if this fails, it's not too bad. And we get the vanity pass in, and then I'll, I'll completely space out that the catcher should have been in the middle, and the dude doing the vanity pass should have been on the corner, so I set up a full screen, or a full cage, sorry, on the wrong character, so... Yeah, pretty good player. So we rem removed a guy on the right hand side of the pitch, so that's the way that we're going to manoeuvre. He comes in on the left flank. Kind of over commits three people deep when he doesn't have the movement to keep up with my guys. Um, so we're just kind of going to hammer it home on this flank. That's a blitz opportunity if I've ever seen one. Gets a nice 2 die blitz with his uh, Beast of Nurgle. Doesn't break armor though. And sticks it to two of my people. Nurgle Warrior makes things difficult again, but that is my 4 strength person, so I do have a 2 die there as long as I can displace the Pestigore. So that's uh, step number 1. Keep them grouped up. Doesn't really work out for me. And yeah, we're definitely going blitz off the uh, loner rotter. Which is good. And put him in a position uh, where I can hopefully uh, get a, a surf on them if they stand them up next turn. I only got a push on the Nogal Warrior, which sucks a bit, but that's what, what it is. And then we're just going to tuck ourselves in behind here. I've started to pass it off a little bit, uh, just because uh, the thrower will have a better chance at swinging it over to the left flank. Tried to dodge out there, didn't work. 
That's fine. Dodging out with this one makes it difficult for him to bring his left flank back over. It's, it's like an indirect screen, I guess you could call it. This guy's just set himself up for a um, for a surf, but I'm guessing he's going for a one die, or sorry, a two die because of horns onto the ball carrier. Two, three, four, five, six. It's a double going for it. So this uh, four strength catcher is actually in a pretty good spot to receive the ball. Not after that push though. I was looking at a rotate over to the left flank. Here comes a big blitz. Rerolls it. Gets both down. And injury hurts a lot actually. I haven't used my Apo yet, and he he hasn't really threatened any of my dudes, so I decided to Apo this uh, just so I'm a bit stronger next game. The Rotter catches it, which I'm not too worried about, I should be able to get a million blocks on him. Uh, this not right now, so. Put him in a position where uh, if we don't get the block, we can surf him, which is definitely the ball out of his hands. Uh, we just need to do a three dive. Sorry, a. Uh, what am I trying to say? A three plus with a re roll to get it. I decided to take the one die first because um, the plan was to do that anyway, but it would have been a red die if I'd done the blitz first. So, a little bit riskier, but. Didn't catch it. If I caught that, it would have been nice, and it lands in uh, a horrible spot. Really good for him, really bad for me. So, I decided to come back and cover the square a little bit. Main threat right now is him picking up the ball and handing it off to the, or well, blitzing off the marker on the rudder and going that way. Um, so I'm mainly scared about yeah, blitzing off with the Nurgle warrior into marking up my characters and handing off or well, pick up hand off with the Pestigore. And push is good enough for this play. Yeah. And then he, he tries a four, he misses, he actually told me in the chat he missed the tackle zones. And he, I, I think he was just trying to mark up that ball. So that was obviously a big mistake by him and uh, just a huge opportunity now. So yeah, we're going to try to pick it up with uh, the blitzer down the bottom here. I'm going to blitz with the four strength, foul appearance would ruin my day. A down is super good. So. We're going to mark up the spare Pestigore as well so that they can't influence anything. I think about uh, doing a handoff to the other Blitzer, but I decided to keep them there marked on the Rotter and Beast and Urgle so that they can't get involved in the game instead. And we're just going to sit on the outside. We get the pick up inside the tackle zone, which is nice. Didn't have to use my reroll. Uh, do the one die, so then we can get a two die on the Beast and Urgle. And we get uh, foul appearance. It's alright, we get another go into foul appearance, so pretty fun. But we're in a pretty good position to run off with the ball now. We've got everyone marked up, he's going to have to do some tough dodges to get on the ball. Especially with no rerolls, it's looking good for us. The beast succeeds, which is uh, scary as. Tentacles makes it very difficult. I'm actually a bit more worried. And he tries for a Hail Mary dodge instead of uh, making the block. So I've got a free player now because that block wasn't made, which makes it a one die on the uh, on the beast or a two die if I blitz with somebody else, which I decide to do, and it works out. So even a push is good enough there just to free up my character. Down the pitch we go. And we're going to set up a little sideline uh, screen instead of uh, getting the two die on the Pestigore. Just a bit of a safer play, protecting the ball over making the blocks, because if that block fails, there's chances. Get a skull, decide to re-roll re it, because it's late in the game, and I think I've already got this tied up. If something does go wrong, I'll only need one re-roll to pick up the ball again. Get another foul appearance and another one again. So it's four in a row versus that one. Chaos, war, uh, Nurgle Warrior, sorry. 
Get the one die there, which is nice. And then we may as well just blitz out. Oh, sorry, dodge out. It's been a pretty straightforward game. The opportunity has been there. Um, the mistake with the dodge uh, with his rotter was probably the big turning point. Um, up to that point, it was still pretty even. Like I said, he had very good chances on the ball with how it scattered coming out of bounds. Uh, my main mistake, even getting to that point though, was allowing the uh, two die uh, horns play on the sideline there. I didn't really. I don't know why, but I didn't really see that. I didn't count for it, so that punished me pretty hard. If I kept it in the hands of the catcher behind the thrower, it would have been fine. But. And at this stage, he's just making blocks instead of going for the ball. If you blitz with this character and try to get in front and maybe dodge a couple more people out, I would have been a bit scared. But we decided to come back a little bit, which is a mistake, because I noticed at this point, uh, bringing that person out means that I can't do my uh, sideline cage anymore. Which my plan was just to sit in the corner and keep one off him, but if he blitzes with the pest gore and it actually breaks armor on one of these guys, it's actually terrifying for me. So this is that was a bit of a bad play to move that person down first. Uh, we're going to try to remedy that with a um, with a dodge with the line woman, which is what happens right now. So yeah, but that was a small mistake that could have been capitalized on. This is the only guy that can still score, so it's worth the dodge out to try to get the block. And we're just trying to get our mighty blow safe now. Come into his second last turn. He's just trying to get a little bit of SPP now. Pretty clean game, I don't think there was much in it. Um, things just kind of went the way that they did. Uh, he rolled his skulls. His lack of rerolls and lack of block really kind of meant the bashing game was only ever going to be one sided, especially because he lacks the uh, strength with the traditional uh, four Nurgle Warrior lineup. Get the touchdown to a blitzer. And yeah, that's pretty much pretty much the game. Um, I've used my Apo. So any perms on the uh, line of scrimmage hurt a bit, but nothing really, nothing comes of it, I believe. Barely breaks armor. I'll set up for the one turn touchdown instead because I know Chaos or like any six movement team can get a one turn touchdown. It's very difficult to do but it can happen so may as well prepare against that and make sure the back screen set up correctly. Obviously pretty next to impossible with no rerolls and not much uh, skills on his character but you got to play the odds. Stuns, which is nice, makes my <laughs> makes one of my characters safe, so I'm actually pretty happy to see that. Two characters to save now. Another one safe. A foul could happen, but that means the mighty blow is not hitting me, which is nice. And big blitz. Push. Push. Could have had a three die on that if he moved one more, uh, and he's picking up on that now for this this turn. It's his last hit. And yeah, safe. So that's pretty much the game. Uh, yeah, like I said, very solid, and that brings our record to two wins, zero draws, and one loss so far, which I believe puts me in third with some games to play still. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Catch us next time.